We are at the border with Syria, at the very north of Israel. So this is Syria, wow, so close. This is where uh, all the fighting went on just a few months ago. Do you see this? It says danger. In this episode, we'll explore the Syrian borders. Look at this. On the left, minefields. On the right, minefields. Minefields everywhere. We're literally driving in between the mines. That's right. Because of all the wars with Syria and Lebanon in the past 69 years, Israel had buried mines alongside the borders. We're driving at the very borders between Israel and Syria, up in the north of Israel. And this is the very ground that Israel held. And when Syria advanced in 1973, Israel held its ground right here from that mountain top. And then they even won another extra 20 kilometers inland towards Syria. October 1973, the Arab coalition carries out a surprise attack against Israel on Yom Kippur. Led by Egypt and Syria, with support of Jordan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, Cuba, and of course, the Soviet Union. Israel stands alone with its one ally, the United States of America. The odds of winning for Israel? Improbable. No, scratch that. Impossible. The Arab coalition came with over a million troops, 5,000 tanks, 4,000 armored carriers, artillery units, half a thousand aircrafts, helicopters, a hundred navy vessels, while well, Israel had less than a third of all that. As the Arabs started moving tanks and troops into the land of Israel, Israel defends and pushes back and then wins over 20 kilometers into Syria. But when the war is over and Israel really wants to make peace, it cuts a deal and gives back that extra land and the UN declares it as the buffer zone. So how did Israel win? Either by mere luck and coincidence or they had a second ally. The God Almighty. What's interesting is that on top of the mountain we saw two UN soldiers who gave us some interesting story about what's going on here. First of all, they told us that the UN does not recognize this is the Israeli border. They say the Israel border is where the Jordan River is. But Israel says, no, this is our border. That's a huge, huge difference of land. There's a lot of land from Jordan to here. That's A. And B, the guys were telling us some interesting things, such as some things that they say is kind of rumors, such as the UN has no more money. They're saying UN is kind of going broke. Meters. That's interesting. <laughs> Right here in the area were also the wind turbines that were placed along the border with Israel. From afar they look very small and they spin so slow. But once you get closer to them, it is a spectacular view. They are giant. It's hard to describe in words how it feels to be standing under one of these things. Tell us what's behind these things. Mines. There are mines. Others at that speed. Wow. From here we get a very good view of Syria. And according to the UN soldiers that we've spoken with, this area harbors over 40 terrorist groups.
since we were in the area, we stopped by the Nimrod Castle. A castle built by... Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2, Section 30. The Caliph Omar bin Abd al-Aziz and the Poets, from the Arabian Nights, translated by Sir Richard Burton. The Caliph Omar bin Abd al-Aziz, who was from the Muslim conquestors, who built this castle in an attempt to defend from the Crusaders, who came to conquer the land in the 13th century. It is placed on a strategic road that led to Damascus. And the castle is indeed very impressive. A lot of medieval architecture, great views and soaring winds. We don't have much to say about this place, except this could be a great new home for our cat Fifi. And on the way back, we decided to stop by the UN buffer zone. Where are we? We're that's Syria. That building is Syria right there. Azor Shadakh Fadak Nisan Rechaf Tsmai Asura. Okay, this is the buffer zone. I guess we're not allowed past this point. That building right there? Syria. Goodbye, Syria. Goodbye, Syria. Bye, Syria.